Welcome to Booze in the Rocks, where we make cocktails for everyone. My name is David Edwards, and it's great to have you here today. We're going to make a Singapore sling. Now, this cocktail has a lot of variations, a lot of slight different tastes as well, as well as a couple of variations on its history. But we're going to make the version that is still served at the Raffles Hotel today in Singapore. Now, the reason I choose that is because also the generally accepted story at the time is that a young bartender who started working recently at the Long Bar at the Raffles Hotel, his name being Niam Tong Boon, realized that by British custom, the ladies were not supposed to uh, be seen drinking in public. And he thought, well, you know what? Here's a great way for me to make more sales at the bar. I'll make a cocktail that looks like it's fruit juice. Smart man, that. Having said that, this drink has been incredibly popular and can be found worldwide. Now, it's got a lot of ingredients. So let's just kind of describe them to you. We're gonna start with the easy stuff first. You need a little bit of lime juice. And of course, we'll all use fresh limes for that. But we also need some grenadine. Now I'm using Rose's grenadine. It just happens to be what I have on the shelf. If you have some homemade grenadine, awesome. The next thing you need is pineapple juice. And we're going to use a pure pressed pineapple juice so there's no sugar added and it'll give us a better flavoring in my opinion. But use what you got. We also need some bitters. In this case, we need some Angostura bitters, which is originally from Trinidad, and it's 44.7% ABV. For those of you who did not realize, bitters actually have alcohol in them. Your next ingredient is a dry gin. I'm muting Beef Eater London Dry Gin. It's 40% ABV with good strong notes of juniper. We're also going to use a cherry liqueur. Now we're using cherry herring for this. It's 24% ABV and it's dark in color and it's got this great cherry flavor. Your next ingredient is an orange liqueur and we're using another French liqueur, that's Cointreau. Now that's 40% ABV as well. And your final ingredient is one you don't see in use very often called Dom Benedictine. It's a French herbal liqueur that's got those earthy notes and those herbal notes and it's a sweet and viscous liqueur that's 40% ABV. So let's get into this. This is a shaken cocktail. So the first thing you're going to do is grab your lime and what we'll do is we will squeeze out half an ounce or 15 milliliters into the glass. The second ingredient that you're going to use is a dry gin. Now I did say I'm using beef here. Use whatever dry gin you want. And this is part of where you'll see differences in the way that this cocktail is developed because they use different gins which have different floral notes. And we're gonna use one ounce or 30 milliliters. The third ingredient that you're going to use is a cherry liqueur. Now I am using cherry herring. It is one of the liqueurs that you would actually have had available at that time. And we don't need a lot of this, but we're going to use half an ounce or 15 mils. The fourth ingredient that we're going to use is a French orange liqueur. Now we're using Cointreau. You could choose triple sec if you want, or Grand Marnier. Again, depending on what you have access, but you don't need a lot of this. You're just gonna need a little bit to give you some orange notes and you need a quarter of an ounce or seven and a half mils. Looking good so far. We also need now a little bit of a Dom Benedictine. Now this is, as I said, a French herbal liqueur. It's really, really good. It's sweet. Some people will say the herbs give you awesome be health benefits, but you know what? I just really like it. It's one that doesn't get a lot of play. And we'll use seven and a half mils. We're going to now add a little bit of aromatic bitters. In this case, we're using Angostura bitters. It's what it was called for in the recipe as well, but you don't need a lot. You only need one dash. Next, we're going to add a little bit of color to this. So what we'll do is we will grab your grenadine. You don't need a lot. Um, you'd get more pomegranate flavor if you used a homemade uh, grenadine, but in this case, we're not going to use much. We're just going to use a third of an ounce or 10 mils. Now we're going to add some pineapple juice. I got nothing fancy to say about pineapple juice. It's pineapple juice, it's fantastic, right? But we're going to use a fair amount of it which will level everything out. We need a total of four ounces, which is 120 milliliters. Oh yeah, finish that off like so. Now what we will do is we will shake this with a little bit of ice. So you wanna fill your glass up all the way. Just be careful doing it because you don't want to splash all over the place. And the other thing is because this is this fresh pineapple juice, it will give you a little bit of foam when you shake. So make sure you have a good seal, put a clip and give it a shake. Yeah, pop that off with the strength of Singapore's national drink. 
put that off to the side like so. Grab yourself a hurricane glass. And I just love these glasses. And we're gonna fill this up with ice. Just a little bit like so. Yeah, like so. And what you wanna do now is just grab your Hawthorne strainer, drop it on top and pour it in. Look at that. Absolutely perfect to look at. Grab yourself a traditional garnish of a little bit of pineapple and a red cherry. Slide that onto the right side because you're supposed to sling it that way. Grab a straw and let's try it out. <clears throat> oh yeah, I can see why this was so good. It's got some cherry, it's got those orange, it's got those herbal notes, and it's got those citrus notes. If you like this style of cocktail, take a look up in this corner and I'll add a few for you.